Hey, what's going on guys, it's the OG. In this video, I want to give you my opinion on the content updates announced at ExileCon, my thoughts on the event as I experienced it as a viewer from home, and tell you what I'm excited about and also what does not have me hyped from all the announcements about 3.9, Path of Exile 2, Path of Exile Mobile, the new league and the content schedule leading up to 4.0. But before we start, a quick heads up, I'll do a Q&A video, so if you want to ask me a question, Post it below and I'll answer it in the video. Patrons at Patreon get pay to win treatment as a little thank you for the support. So if you are a patron, head over to patreon.com slash itsyog and you can ask your question there if you like. But back to the topic. First of all, let me talk about the event itself. As a viewer from home, I have to say I watched, watched the whole broadcast, uh, about half of it live and half of it as VOD. I love the fact that they let people rebroadcast it, so I got to enjoy the commentary of, for example, Carve as well as Catmaster OP uh, on top of the event instead of just watching the event on the Path of Exile channel uh, and the spammy chat on the side. Uh, I had yeah, small chats of those streamers uh, at the side of the event, uh, so you could like discuss it live with the streamer and the chat, and that was like really interactive and really cool, and a lot better for me personally as someone who is part of the community than watching it and uh, just having a spammy chat and nothing else. And in general, for me, my favorite part was the involvement of all the well-known streamers from the community uh, in the event, and the amount of freedom the streamers had to ask any questions and in general shape the segments they're on in the way they wanted to. And it really showed with how different every segment felt, like Quinn asking Chris community questions uh, from his phone and Taki basically holding a freeform podcasts with the guys from Front Seat Gamer, uh, or Asuzara getting excited about animation and boss design, Octavian going super in depth with like decision making behind game mechanics, I think he was interviewing Neon and Rory, and there was so much more going on, everything felt very distinct and different and also which community members or streamers were chosen to do which segment really made sense and I felt everyone it felt like everyone was really at home in the topic that they were given which was really really cool. Another highlight for me was the builds panel with uh, EE, Mathel, Rise and Gazi and I think they all did a fantastic job as well even though it felt like a little bit short and they just went over like very general stuff. I think it was really, really cool as well to watch. There was like so much good stuff going on, but just that they were giving so much freedom and that the whole event was kind of like made and shaped together with the streamers. So basically with people coming from the community, I think was really awesome. And giving streamers this much freedom and agency to create basically what is their own content within an of uh, official Path of, Path of Exile event was a huge risk for uh, GGG if you think about it. And also with that, an immense show of respect and trust into like, in the community and the content creators of the community, the content creators community that has formed around their game over the years. And that was like a really awesome way to basically give back to all those people and to the community itself. And in my opinion, that was a risk that really, really did pay off big time. This made the event feel very genuine, authentic, and it really showed that GGG are very confident in their product as well and confident in the upcoming PoE content that they are willing to answer any questions without preparation live on a huge stream in front of hundreds of thousands of people. They, they nailed it in my opinion. There was just no script, just developers being genuinely excited and passionate about the game they created and the game they keep working on and even the scripted parts like the presentations uh, they did feel very different from what I'm used to from uh, other video game press conferences, uh, conventions, etc. Because it didn't feel as as staged. It felt, felt it felt like a real event with like real emotions. And even with some of the clumsy moments and some of the awkwardness that maybe resulted from uh, the more unhonest and unscripted nature of the event, I prefer it over other gaming events I've seen in the past. Because honestly, I've long since stopped watching stuff like E3, BlizzCon and the like. They re feel really like sanitized and more like well choreographed commercials. And the sanitized feel of those events and the intent, uh, intent of just making the product seem as good as possible and most of the time making it seem better than it actually is and trying to trick the audience into not seeing like the, the weak points or the unfinished parts. At this point just annoys me because it kind of shows lack of respect for your audience, for your customers and for your community, in my opinion. And I, in my opinion, GGG did not show that. GGG managed to do none of that and simply killed it with being passionate about their game 
And if there were questions that they either could not answer, or things that were not decided yet, or things that they were themselves not sure about how it would work out, they simply said, hey, we are still trying to figure that out and we'll get to you as soon as we know. I think that honestly goes a long way and compared to like just trying to hide, cover up the like potential weak points or unfinished details of your game, which a lot of other devs have tried to do in the past. And when Chris was like struggling to keep his calm during the keynote presentation, that was one of the best moments in Ex of Exarchon for me personally. Seeing Chris and all also all the other devs throughout the event being just as hyped about the reveal as us long-term players watching were, that, that honestly meant the world to me. Seeing that the, those people who make the game are as passionate about the game as us people playing the game are, or maybe even more, that you, you can't replace that. That was one of the, the best, if not the best, moment uh, of Exarchon for me. So to me, even though I sadly could not find the time to fly out to New Zealand myself, Exarchon was an amazing event and a huge success, even watching it from home. And one of the best gaming related events that I've so far uh, watched or yeah, seen myself. But enough about the event, let's move on to the actual content that was revealed. The three things that were presented at the convention were the 4.0 patch, also known as Path of Exile 2, the 3.9 content update Conquerors of the Atlas, as well as the accompanying uh, Metamorph League and Path of Exile Mobile. I'll start with Path of Exile 2 because that's kind of like the biggest thing, right? A whole new 7-act campaign, completely reworked item-based progression and full new set of ascendancies, a visual overhaul, gem system overhaul, a lot of stuff happening, right? So the visual overhaul and the ca campaign, I'm not too excited about. Honestly, it's nice when the game looks better and uh, a campaign will be fun to play through for a while, but that stuff simply isn't why I personally play PoE. But, and this is a big juicy but, uh, I believe this will be great for the game's growth and draw in tons of new players, tons of attention and help the game grow. And it might also bring, bring back a lot of old uh, players who, who just like kind of get uh, bored by the game or the game started to feel a bit stale to them. So they might be like, oh, I might check it out again. Maybe they get hooked again and play for a while. That would be nice, right? So I think that's a great chance for the game to grow an enormous amount. Plus, it isn't like I mind uh, the game looking and feeling more smooth to play. Like, honestly, if the game looks more awesome and better, uh, that's great. And a new campaign will make the f game feel more fresh uh, for a while at least. But that's not the part I'm hyped about. Now, the skill gem system and the item base overhaul, as well as like ton of, tons of new ascendancy classes, basically like, like a whole new set, that's something that gets me really excited. Uh, it's really difficult to tell what impact on the metagame uh, all that stuff will have, but uh, especially the gem system, but build making as well as like item balance and then, yeah, how, how we will implement skills into our builds and also, of course, ascendancy class choices. It will basically change completely how we make builds, I feel. And that's like a really excited thing to look forward to as someone who enjoys the game game's progression systems, the game's end game progression, as well as like just trying out making interesting and new builds that I haven't experienced before, because it probably introduces like 15 bazillion new potential builds with just one patch. That's pretty cool, right? So yeah, that's what, what I'm personally looking forward to a lot, just exploring this system once 4.0 hits. So for the new Ascendancy classes, right now we don't know much about them, but the sheer amount of them will break open the meta for sure, and it will take people a few patches to really try out and compare all the different new options for builds. And I hope this will result in a lot of new and fun playstyles, like the shapeshifting that look like it could be ex extremely fun and feel very different from anything we have had in PoE or currently have in PoE. And if you add on top of that, like new item base progression, um, we might actually be looking at something that does feel like a totally different game, right? And that's kind of like where the name Path of Exile 2 starts making sense. And I think uh, the whole different game vibe could also be in a good way, right? I mean, currently I love PoE how it is currently, but I think the result from the Path of Exile 2 patch or the 4.0 expansion will still be close enough to current PoE, but with so much fresh air that it might actually feel a lot like a new game. I think that's actually a pretty bold move by GGG to bring that much change all at once to the game, but I'm all for it. I think it could be really, really cool. So currently I'm very optimistic that this will be a good change for Path of Exile and a great chance, but it could also go horribly wrong for balancing. So let, let's keep our fingers crossed, all right? Next up, I got a uh, Path of Exile Mobile on my uh, little list here. To be clear up front, I don't play any games on my phone currently, none. 
absolutely no games on my phone and I don't think I'd have much time to play any games on my phone during the, my day even if I had a game that I really enjoyed such as Path of Exile on my phone. So I'm clearly not the target audience for a mobile game but with that in mind I do think uh, it is cool that GG are trying to explore new ways to get Path of Exile out to people. Am I excited for a game that I probably won't play much myself? Nope. But I believe this is a good opportunity to bring more people into the PC or console versions of the game. Although I heard a lot of negative stuff recently about the console version of PoE. Um, so I hope the mobile game will do better in that regard. And the demo they showed at ExileCon did look like an early prototype, but the core idea of having it mainly be a mapping experience seems to kind of make sense for mobile gaming. And I was really impressed when I watched Ziggy play it um, with how well the UI actually seemed to work and like how they well they made the PoE type gameplay work on a touch screen which is really really nice without actually compromising or sacrificing too much depth. Of course it was quite the different gaming experience but I think it got close enough to PoE to actually feel like PoE when you play it. So overall I think Path of Exile Mobile could be pretty good but I'm not really an expert on that on mobile gaming and I'm not the target audience so I'm not excited for it but I'm, I also don't mind it. Lastly I want to look at the content coming up in December. Firstly we got the Metamorph League which seems like a bossing focused league with a mad scientist theme to it and I can get behind both of that but uh, we got very little information so far about the league from what I've seen or maybe there isn't j just isn't that much to the whole system right. Um, I like that we'll get a bossing focus league for once. Um, Legion and Blight were both both mostly clearing focused, so it is nice to have a bit more of a, a single target focus, if you will. Now, of course, as with all boss content, uh, it really comes down to how fun the boss fights themselves are, how well designed they are, and how well they nail the risk versus reward or the investment or time investment versus reward for the boss fights to see if it's actually like fun doing, worth doing, and doesn't get boring or annoying too quickly which I can definitely see in a league where you have just like a set of bosses that you fight over and over. I'm kind of skeptical that the league will be super great but I think it has potential and maybe it is a lot better than I expected. So far I have a pretty horrible track record of predicting which leagues will be good and which leagues will be bad so this one might as well be pretty damn good even though I think it's probably I think personally I think it's not going to be amazing but pretty fun. That's what I'm expecting. But with Conquerors of the Atlas launching alongside Metamorph League, luckily, I don't think the League will have to carry this patch. For long-term players, the main selling point of this expansion will be the major endgame overhaul it brings. And oh boy, am I happy to hear we got new endgame bosses to strive towards beating, having Uber Elder as the ultimate goal to fight for so many patches now, and Shaper being kind of a joke at this stage, I'm pretty happy to get something new to try my endgame characters against, and with 5 new bosses to learn the mechanics of, that sounds really nice. As I understand it, the Conquerors will work somewhat like the Elder mechanic, where you will fight them in earlier tiers as well as higher tiers to progress through the, through the Atlas and get your sockable stones to put into the Atlas. So you will have to be able to fight them already in white maps, because you will need the stones to upgrade them to yellow maps, from my understanding currently. So no more Shaper Orbs, no more Elder Orbs, so potentially no more farm one single map over and over metagame. That would be kind of interesting, because since we have the atlas that's been mostly what people have been doing farm one, one map and build your whole atlas around that and just farm this map over and over and over and with saxons being reworked as well to uh modify one area like one of those quote-unquote countries of the atlas um as far as i understand it uh, it kind of makes sense to be able to actually farm multiple maps and make that efficient because currently with how saxons work kind of want to saxon up like one map that can carry a lot of saxons and run at least three in a row of that map that's covered currently so that might change the whole uh, mapping matter quite a lot which i'm looking forward to however i wonder how that will impact divination card farm ability in solo self hound which i was uh, mostly playing in the past so currently if you can farm one map over and over and over very easily with like shaping your atlas around it you can farm even hard to farm divination cards not easily it does take quite a lot of time to for example farm a calm's heart but you if you have basically an infinite supply of volcano maps uh, you can farm a calm's heart eventually which is nice this is deterministic farming what have we have been asking for for quite some time now so i wonder if that will be gone with the new atlas but we will see i think it's too early to call that right now with the information we currently have 
But overall, I'm looking forward to a different progression scheme in the endgame mapping system and of course new bosses, as I said. So with Shaper and Elder touched items gone, as well as their, their unique drops probably becoming extremely rare now with the Guardians, uh, Guardian maps being locked behind Zana quests, I think the metagame overall, like the, the build metagame, will change quite a bit. And at the same time, they will introduce new Conqueror touched items and even Conqueror specific currency for crafting. And that could enable, of course, a new set of builds, while the old meta is kind of more difficult to get to, with Elder and Shaper bases being a lot more rare, right? So I'm actually hyped for like a big meta shift that is not as enforced as uh, the last meta shifts. Also, it of course remains to be seen what the new mods on the con Conqueror specific Conqueror touched items will be. So maybe some of the Elder and Shaper mods will be reused into the those, so some of the builds still stay available. We don't know that yet. But yeah, 3.9 overall has me really excited. So to sum up my personal feelings of the announcements in really short terms, Exilcon, really awesome event. Awesome, honest, and very, very, very cool that they included the community. PUE2, I'm hyped for the big systematic and gameplay changes. Looking forward to the visual stuff and kinda neutral on the new campaign. PUE Mobile, I am not a mobile gamer, but it looks alright. Better than I would have thought it could be. Metamorph League. It has the potential to be a good bossing league, but it's really hard to tell at this point, and the crafting with the quality items seems kinda meh. The theme is really cool though. Conquest of the Atlas has me really excited. Meta shift, Atlas changes, endgame will feel fresh again, new bosses, new boss uniques, new build and aiding items, awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Subscribe for more Path of Exile content. I'm Yoji, and I will see you soon.